Okay, a second way we can strengthen it is through solid solution strengthening. Um, if we have a solid piece that's not supposed to be there, so something like this, an extra atom where there shouldn't be one, if we were to stick one in here, it would begin to cause strain on everything around it. Okay? It would begin to cause strain on everything around it. It's pressing on everything outside of it. And we see something very similar to this. Um, because we have dislocations, they cause lattice strains. So over here, there's too much. Okay, they're compressed together. Over here, there's too little, and there's a tensile stress. And so our dislocation is causing that the entire time. So there's something that can block that compressive stress and block that or fill that tensile stress. It will cause that dislocation to have more difficulty moving. So the way we can do that is by adding in another material and a solid solution. So um, the lattice strain interactions with the strains introduced by impurity atoms will make it more difficult for that dislocation to move. Because let's say we have a smaller atom that we put in the place of a larger atom. Well, all these guys are going to be trying to press in on this atom because there's nothing holding them back there. Like, wait a second, there's a gap. I'm trying to push in it. And so that can cancel out the tensile and dis, um, compressive strains. And it will cause a higher shear stress to be required to cause dislocation motion. And you can see that right here. You can see that right there. That because instead of having big atoms right here, we have small atoms, well, there's less compression over there. There's less compression. And because there's less compression on that side, it is actually keeping this dislocation from being able to move because this is actually making it kind of happy. It's not as um, it's not as closely packed here as it was before. And so it's harder for it to move. Now, large substitutional impurity atoms do the opposite. Okay, do the opposite. The other one was filling in the compressive one um, by making it less compressed because it's smaller. With a larger impurity atom, it will partially cancel the com um, tensile stresses of the dislocation motion because there was too little over here and now we've been filling it with some larger atoms and now everything over here doesn't quite feel like there's a gap anymore these two big atoms have partially cancelled out the issue with that and so there's now kind of an equilibrium on this side okay yes there's still compression over here but the tensile stress over here it's no longer there there's no longer an issue with that because we've got these bigger atoms at least it's been partially removed um, that makes them happier, which makes it harder for things to move around. We can also see that this plane of atoms, it's no longer as out of whack as it was to begin with. To begin with, going back to here, there is a significant distortion from here to here, and from here to here. Lots of distortion. But with both of these, you can see that these planes, they're not perfect, but there's a lot less distortion in them because we've added in these impurities. And the less distortion there are in the planes, the harder it is for that dislocation to move. Okay, right, so we mix together copper and nickel. Copper and nickel. Well, what we see here is that as the weight percent of nickel increases, we have an increase in the yield strength and an increase in the tensile strength. And empirically, if we were trying to this, or look at this, it's actually proportional to the concentration to the one half. So as we continue to increase the amount of tin or nickel, um, it increases that tensile stress up to a maximum and then eventually it's going to start going down probably to the um, tensile stress of nickel as we approach 100%. So I hope this helps you. I hope you realize today that what we learned is that by alloying different metals, we can increase their um, strength, their tensile stress, and their sorry, the tensile strength. I always get the wrong word. Tensile strength and the yield stress required to cause them to dislocate, because the big atoms fill in the tensile stress. There was a big gap, and they filled it. And the small atoms fill in and remove some of the compression, because they were all compressed together. And now there's small atoms there, so they're not feeling as pressured. 
Because of that, it makes all the planes more in alignment, makes it harder for this liquid to move. So thank you for listening. I hope this helps you, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.